what i'd like to say is following up on what was said in the morning asia is moving towards further economic integration <laughs> and it is more so in south asia and the indian ocean which is one of the least economically integrated uh, areas in that respect many of the asian countries have put forward their proposals policies sometimes complementary to each other sometimes in competition with each other but the objectives have not uh, not changed in this respect sri lanka itself is making its contribution by making sri lanka the hub of the indian ocean <laughs> what we have done as far as sri lanka is concerned first is we are to negotiate we started the negotiations and now to come we are in the process by mid this year to complete the negotiations for market entry firstly uh, to the si single market the gsp plus facility which gives concessions to sri lankan goods and services have been approved in principle by the eu and the uh, customary two months period uh, after the two months period the announcement will be made as to the date on which sri lankan goods can enter the single market The Davos dream is dead. The Sri Lankan globalist experiment is imploded into utter and total chaos. If you're confused about what's happening in Sri Lanka, this video will clarify everything for you. We're going to take a look at what precipitated the crisis step by step. We're going to see how the dolts in Davos contributed to it. And make sure to stick with the very end of this video when we'll find out how many more Sri Lankas are coming. You are not. Going to want to miss this. Greetings, patriots all across the world. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you as always. I am your daily fake news antidote, so come on in to your patriot professor's den. We're helping to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. If you're already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Before we begin, gang, I do want to introduce you to patriots who put together some wonderful products for those of you concerned about your skin. I've got a few teenagers in my home and we're dealing with some acne issues, skin blemishes, basic aging stuff for us older folk as well, right? So whether you're young or old, skin issues always seem to surface. And that's where our good friends over at Curativa Bay come in. They have particularly this wonderful organic hypochlor spray that refreshes the skin. It enhances skin tone. It's got this lovely refreshing feel when you spray it on. It provides relief from acne and all kinds of skin issues because it's a natural antiviral, antibacterial spray. It's wonderful stuff. You're going to absolutely love all of Curativa Bay's products. You got to visit their website, curativabay.com. They got all kinds of skin cleansers, moisturizers, you name it. And for a limited time, they're offering my audience a special exclusive discount if you use my promo code TURLY. So don't wait. Click on that link below right now and try out these amazing products brought to you by some pretty amazing patriots. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. I'm sure you've all seen by now the utterly insane video footage coming out of the nation of Sri Lanka. But many pundits and commentators are openly surmising that what's happening right now in Sri Lanka may indeed be just the beginning. The British Guardian ran the headline recently, Sri Lanka is the first domino to fall in the face of a global debt crisis. And they went on to argue that this economic collapse that we're seeing in Sri Lanka may indeed be but the first of many more to come around the world, which of course forces us to ask the question, why? What the heck is actually going on in Sri Lanka? Well, let's rewind a few years back to August of 2018, the World Economic Forum published an article entitled 
This is how I will make my country rich by 2025. It was written by Ranil Wickremesinghe. He is uh, now or was the prime minister of Sri Lanka. He's the fellow you heard speaking earlier in the video in, you know, calm, measured tones in Davos in contrast to today's chaos in the streets of Sri Lanka. Now, what is so interesting here? is that if you go to that article today, you will find it's been deleted from the WEF website. It's not there. They're hiding it. The WEF is deliberately trying to hide their failed roadmap that led to this crisis. But my dear friends, I am your patriot professor, helping you to think better so you can feel better. And I do the research so that you don't have to. And I found an archive version of the original article. Ha ha ha. Shall we read a little bit of this together? This roadmap to supposed richness that the World Economic Forum prescribed for Sri Lanka. Our economic policy, Vision 2025, is firmly embedded in several principles, including a social market economy that delivers economic dividends to all. The plan is delivering impressive results. The current government has created over 460,000 jobs and helped more than 260,000 families secure a home. Strong progress is being made on plans to bring opportunities to rural communities by building necessary infrastructure, such as roads and bridges, connecting rural and urban areas and linking Sri Lanka's economic hubs. Program Enterprise Sri Lanka has been launched to encourage young and educated entrepreneurs who receive loans to start small and medium-sized enterprises. The government has also invested in some mega projects, including the Colombo Megapolis constructions to build a city of the future and irrigation projects to generate green energy and provide water resources for agro production. Now, you would You might think, okay, sounds fine and dandy, right? I mean, who could argue with a lot of that? We're investing in our people. We're investing in our education. We're investing in our infrastructure. We've got super megapolises being built. We're going green, right? Everything's fine, right? But the obvious question here is, uh, where are you getting the money for this? (laughs) Well, that's easy. They borrowed it. Altogether, Sri Lanka racked up tens of billions of dollars in debt to China, to Japan, to what's called the Asian Development Bank, and of course, to European private foreign lenders, virtually all of whom you'll find at Davos. And they spent, and they spent, and they spent all on these lavish domestic projects. They milked their central bank for all it was worth. They were borrowing cheap money like crazy, and far richer nations and private investors were all too glad to give it to them, thinking that they were going to get a massive bargain with the prospects for Sri Lankan economic growth. At the same time, if you can believe it, the government tried to impose a radical green policy on the nation. Hello, Dutch farmers, right? Following the latest goals at Davos, they wanted to be the world's first 100% organic country. They banned any kind of chemical in their fertilizer. They implemented all kinds of green-based restrictions in their food production. And it didn't take long for the obvious result to become clear. Basically, their food production collapsed. Around the same time, lending nations and investors start to make a run on their loans, calling on Sri Lanka to start paying them back. Come on, let's go. And of course, Sri Lanka completely ran out of their foreign reserves. And so in May of this year, the Sri Lankan government was forced to formally default on its overseas loans making them the first country in the Asian Pacific to default in more than two decades. Their currency, the Sri Lankan rupee, has since lost half of its value. Inflation has skyrocketed to an astonishing 75%. The government announced that they've run out of food, fuel, medicines. They're they're implementing daily uh, blackouts, rolling blackouts throughout the nation. And finally, the people had enough. And boom, you got a mass uprising and an imploding government. And the result of the Davos dream? Sri Lanka is teetering on being recognized internationally as a failed state. So now the next question of all in all of this is given that they threw their lot in with globalism, how many more Sri Lankas are we going to see? 
But before I get into that, hey, who wants their own Klaus Schwab shirt, right? Well, you can get yours by clicking on that link below and enjoying Christmas in July at our Turley Talks merch store. We're winning so much of late that we wanted to celebrate those wins with a special 4th of July sale all throughout the month of July. So make sure to click on that link below. And for just July, if you buy two shirts, you're going to get one absolutely free. That's right. Get two for yourself. Get one for the Patriots. Get two for Patriots, one for you. You know, they'll all love you for it. Click on that link below or go to store.turleytalks.com. All right. The obvious question here is that given the globalist political and economic interrelationships in the world today, how many more Sri Lankas can we expect to see? Well, again, going back to that British Guardian article, they're calling Sri Lanka the canary in the coal mine. When all is said and done, there are a number of developing nations across the globe who are struggling with the rising cost of their debt and the massive increase in food and fuel prices around the world. Altogether, we're looking at no less than 107 countries facing at least one of three shocks, rising food prices, rising energy prices, or tighter financial conditions. All three shocks are currently being faced by 69 countries, 25 in Africa, 25 in Asia and the Pacific, and 19 in Latin America. And again, the key here is not so much what's going on in Russia, Ukraine. That crisis per se is not driving these shocks, as it were. It's actually the blowback they're getting with the rising cost of debt that these nations accrued because of the cheap money, the low interest financing that Davos-based nations were lending out all these years. But now with inflation and the Federal Reserve here in the States raising interest rates, the concern is that more and more debtor nations are going to buckle under the pressure. So obviously we'll keep an eye on what's going on here, but it is becoming more and more apparent that the collapse of Sri Lanka may indeed be nothing less than a symbolic microcosm of the collapse of globalism itself. Now, before you go, you will definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on the even bigger picture of how the liberal world order is indeed imploding. I think, <laughs> think of this as part two to this video. You'd absolutely love it. So make sure to click on that link and I'll see you over there. God bless.